Okay, this video is going to show you guys how to calculate the value of an equilibrium constant and calculating the value of any kind of equilibrium constant is going to be done pretty much the same way as well as long as you're given equilibrium concentrations or pressures. So here's a question and if we read the question the first thing that you want to notice is that it says the following equilibrium concentrations. So this is telling you that these concentrations were given here this concentration of ammonia, this concentration of nitrogen, and this concentration of hydrogen are all at equilibrium. And that's important because if they're not, then we need to do the math differently, which we'll do that later this week. So these are equ all equilibrium concentrations. Yesterday or the other day in the other video, um, we talked about how equilibrium constants are going to be a certain number at a particular temperature and if the temperature changes then the value of the equilibrium constant will change. So um, we explained to you that temperatures would be given but you could ignore them. So we've got an equilibrium concentration for ammonia, one for nitrogen, one for hydrogen, and our job is to calculate the equilibrium constant KEQ for this equilibrium. So the first thing you do is you are going to write the equilibrium expression. So to do that, we take the concentration of our products raised to their coefficients as their power over the concentration of the reactants and I am including all three of these because they are all gases so they're included in the expression. If we had liquids or solids they would not be included. If we had anything that was an aqueous solution that would be included. So first thing I did was to write the expression. You need to get into the habit of doing this because typically on an AP free response question you're going to be getting one point for writing this expression and so you need to know how to do it. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take these equilibrium concentrations and I'm going to substitute them into the expression. So I'm going to take this value for ammonia and it's going in here. So 3.1 times 10 to the negative 2 Uh, moles per liter. Then I'm going to find hydrogen which is over here and I'm going to substitute 3.1 times 10 to the negative 3 and this needs to be cubed. Hopefully you caught me right here that I forgot that this needed to be squared. Um, so now what I need to do is I need to include nitrogen Nitrogen's concentration is here, so I'm going to substitute that 8.5 times 10 to the negative 1. And then all I'm going to do is solve. And I don't know, I have a calculator over here, I haven't used it before. Um, I don't think it's going to let me do exponents. No. So. I'm going to have to use the calculator on my phone. So what I'm going to do is, sorry I'm getting my calculator out. Um, be careful if you're, um, you know, if you're using like a TI-83 or TI-84, remember they do order of operations. So you've got to pay attention to that. So I'm going to take three point all right, my phone's not working. Hang on, let me pause this. All right, I'm back. I had to get my um, calculator working. So 3.1 times 10 to the negative 2 
All right. Take that quantity and square it. And then I'm dividing by the quantity 3.1 times 10 to the negative third. That quantity is going to be cubed. And then I'm taking that times 8.5 times 10 to the negative 1. Um, the important thing to remember here with your calculators is remember that this entire quantity, you are dividing the numerator by that entire quantity. Okay, so when you do that, and we do sig figs, so each of these has two, so our answer will have two. We get 3.8 times 10 to the fourth. Now, in terms of units, you don't have to worry about units with equilibrium constants. Um, they're based on things called activities, which if you want to learn about, you can read about them on page 635 of the textbook. But all I'm going to say is that we are not including them. So for those of you who don't like to include units, you're lucky. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to look at this value. If we think about um, the different values of k, we had talked about k being greater than 1, k being less than 1, and k being equal to 1. This is definitely greater than 1, and so what that tells us is that this reaction at equilibrium is product favored, or the equilibrium lies to the right. Okay. That's your first example. Let's look at another example. So here we've got several sealed tubes containing different concentrations of nitrogen dioxide and dinitrogen tetroxide. Here's the reaction below. Tubes are kept at 100 degrees Celsius. So if you remember, whoops, I didn't need to do that, sorry. Um, tubes are kept at 100 degrees Celsius. Remember, I told you that temperature would be referenced, but we can ignore that until equilibrium is reached. So right here, it's telling you that you're pretty much at equilibrium. The mixture was analyzed and found to contain 0.0014 molar N204, so that's at equilibrium and then 0 0.0172 molar NO2. And they want to know what is the value of K sub C for the reaction below. So think about what I did before. KC is just the equilibrium constant for concentrations. We're going to write our expression first. So we do concentration of products. This has a coefficient of 2. So that needs to be represented here. Divided by our concentration of reactants. And what I need to do, and I haven't been doing well for you guys, is I need to check first and make sure that, yes, these are going to get included in my expression, which they, are, which they are. So I did that. Now what I want to do is I want to take my equilibrium concentrations and I want to substitute them. So 0 0.0014 molar and whoops, what did I do? I stuck the wrong one in there, so I'm going to get rid of it. And I'm going to get rid of this. All right, so let me do this right. Let's take our NO2 and we're going to substitute that into the numerator. So 0 0.0172 molar and that is going to be squared. I'm ignoring units because we don't include them for equilibrium constants, so I'm not going to worry about that. Um, my N2O4 is 0.0014, and if you noticed, I squared my NO2 because of the fact that it was squared in the expression. And then what I'm going to do is I will solve, so I'm going to take point 0.0172 and square that. 
divide that by 0 0.0014. Um, I can use two significant figures, and when I do that, I get 0 0.21 with no units. If I look at my answer, K is less than 1, which means that this is reactant favored or the equilibrium would lie to the left. Now, if you were doing this with pressures, how this would look different is you would be given pressures here instead of concentrations, and you would write your expression, that's not going to be dark enough, as K sub P equals the pressure of NO2 squared divided by the pressure of N2O4, and you would substitute your pressures, which would be written in atmospheres, most likely, into the expression, and you would solve, and it works the same way.